Welcome to Changing Chords. All right, so this is a lesson aimed at beginners on guitar and people who teach beginners. This is a way that I teach people and a way that I find gets people doing it sooner than later. And it gets them playing musical sounding chord playing versus uh, just, you know, physical moving the, you know, the chords around. Okay, so the traditional way when you get to a book or even just somebody showing you how to play is we'll see the first two chords we might learn might be C and G7. So I'll show you a picture of a C. Okay, here's a C chord. You play these strings. Okay, here's a G7 chord. You're going to play these strings. All right. Now we want you to play this music, and it's got four strums for each chord, so you're supposed to play four strums of C and then change quickly to G7 and play four strums of that chord. The problem with that is that we don't know how to do that when we first start off, and so people end up doing something like this. And that doesn't sound like anything. It just sounds like two chords that are being played four times with a copy break in between. So the first thing we need to do is have a plan on how to get from one chord to the next chord. This is usually something people work out on their own, even if nobody's telling them exactly how to do it. But I like to get people there a little bit sooner and get better results. So the first thing we do is we need a plan to get from chord one to chord two. So in this case, we're still going to stick with our C and G7. And this is the plan. You play the C chord. Lovely. Then you move your first finger to the first string, your second finger to the fifth string, and your third finger to the sixth string. So it's first, second, and third, and then you have to move one string and they stay on the same fret. And you play that chord. Then you reverse the process, but you keep the, the order of fingers. First finger, second finger, third finger. First finger, second finger, third finger. First finger, second finger, third finger. All right. Now we combine that with changing the way that we first play them, because I like them to sound like music. So what we do is instead of playing four strums per bar and changing and having all that trouble, we're going to play it one time per bar and have three beats of not strumming that we're going to want to wait. But what are we going to do during those three beats? We're going to move our three fingers on each beat so that not only are we going to be playing something that sounds more musical on the guitar, but our actual movements will be musical. All right, so now we're going to do this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. So what I did then was I moved the first finger, the second finger, and the third finger on the second, third, and fourth um, beats. Half the time I let the strings ring, and half the time I muted it with my hand. Um, I did it both ways because some people aren't bothered by this sound. And some people are. So if you're bothered by it, you can just sort of rest your hand on the strings to kill them so that you can make the changes without those weird notes showing up. Okay. So this is our musical way of doing it. We're going to go strum, first finger, second finger, third finger, 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 strum. You could simplify it by just saying one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, so once you become a master of that, and that won't really take a long time, and you can do it faster. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay? So once you're a master of that, then the next step is to play two strums per bar. So what you're going to do is you're going to play the C chord twice, and then you're going to play the G7 chord twice, and in between that second strum of each bar, you're going to make your changes. So the fingers have to move a little bit faster, but we can slow the tempo down and still be doing something musical. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three. 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 And so we're playing twice as much. Now, I'm saying the one, two, three, and maybe you need to do it, say it, but you don't have to. You can just you can just play it and not say it. Once you can do that, 
do it faster. All right. Next step after that is you play. Now we get to our four strums. Now we can do four strums. We do the four strums slower to start off with, so we have more time between the fourth strum of the C chord and the first strum of the G7 chord. But it would still be the same basic principle. So I could say what I just did. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Four, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then then we're at that point without, you know, having that weird four strums indeterminate period of time of not playing, moving your fingers around. You can actually be playing a song singing a song. I'm not that I'm going to sing for anybody today. Um, you can do that. And we can do it with any two chords. So an A chord and a D chord. So there's our A chord, there's our D chord. Now these ones are far away from each other. But we can still figure out three things to do. So the A is first finger, second finger, third finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, second finger, third finger. So we're, it's not quite as straightforward as the C and G7 because they're right beside each other, but it's the same basic idea. I'm putting my first finger there. Instead of doing something like this where I take all my fingers off and then try and scuffle around trying to find things, you can pick any two chords and you can probably find uh, a way of doing things that way. Anyways, next time we'll talk about specific different, specifically different types of movements we make while changing chords.